Hi everybody, Mr. Wildcat, and today I am coming to you guys from a different perspective that you guys normally see me in. Normally you guys see me reviewing episodes of Married Children, but today, with the Married Children podcast uh, coming, uh, finishing up the final episodes of Married Children, I've decided to uh, take, a, take a look into the ending of Married Children, how the show ended, how it sh and how it should have ended. Okay, but before we dive into and 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 what were my what were my opinions about what had happened? But basically, um, before we go into that, I need to go into a little bit of uh, details regarding um, how we uh, got there and why Mary Lucian was so significant to the Fox Network. Okay, so Fox first came out in. Fox um, was first being pitched in 1986 when Rupert Murdoch bought News Corp and he decided to launch a new fourth network for basic television. The other networks, by the way, were CBS, ABC, and NBC. There was no UPN, there was no WB, there was no PAX, there was no other stations. Like it was, you had like independent stations, of course. But Fox wanted to buy up some of these independent stations in order to put Fox on their lineups and basically independent these in these independent stations they got to keep they got to keep uh, their independent programming except for a couple of hours on Sunday night a couple of hours when Fox decided to air their their um, programming so whenever Fox decided to put on their primetime programming that's uh, the only time that the independent stations were forced to give up any of their respective programming okay but basically Fox uh, first officially launched on April 5th 1987 um, with only three there's only like three shows that were on the air during the first few months of the network and the network only aired on Sunday nights all right those were Mary Children the Tracy Ullman show and 21 Jump Street these were the cornerstones of Mary Ch of the Fox network 21 Jump Street and Tracy Ullman would both leave the Fox Network by 1990, but Married Children wind up lasting 11 years. Wind up lasting 11 seasons over a 10-year period. Okay. Fox's idea to you know, the origins of Married Children were basically from the 1980s, when the other three networks, CBS, ABC, and NBC. We're all show, we're all doing um, TV sitcoms that featured ten children who all got along together. And unless your show had that formula in there, you are not going to make it past the front lobby. The whole point of Fox and their originating and the whole point of Fox and Fox's setup was basically to come up with other shows that you would not find on the other three networks. You had Michael Moyer and Ron Levin who have both worked together on other projects prior to Married Children, most notably The Jeffersons, which ran on CBS from 1975 to 1985. And by the time The Jeffersons came to an end, Levin and Moyer were sick and tired of the Cosby wave and they wanted a break from it. They got pitched by the Fox Network to come up with a show that you would not normally find on the other three. And they basically said, sign me up. We're sick of this shit, too. So they came up with a show that was originally titled Not the Cosbys, because it's basically an anti-Cosby show. It shows how much they hated the Cosbys. It was basically about a family of four who all didn't, none of them got along together. And this is not going to be a show where you're going to be hugging each other or you're going to have a lesson to be learned at the end of the show okay you had these uh basically you had al bundy a shoe salesman uh, who earned a minimum wage you had peggy who is a housewife who did nothing except stay home watching daytime tv and shopping while pounding while hounding al for sex and then you had the two kids bud and kelly neither of whom got along together you had um, 
the original picks for Alan Pegg or these characters were designed based on these two famous comedians in the mid 80s named Roseanne Barr and Sam Kinison and the the thinking was what would happen if you were to get these two together uh, if you were to get these two to be ma if these two were to be married and would have to live with each other what would happen okay that's what it was all about Fox would not hire Roseanne or Sam to do the roles because they were too scared that it would be extremely raunchy Roseanne would eventually go on to land her own TV show in 1988 called Roseanne, which ran for about nine years on ABC. Meanwhile, over at Married Children, uh, Katie Seagal, she got pitched right away. Ed O'Neill uh, got pitched after a long, extensive search, and they winded up. Um, Ed O'Neill at the time had zero credits in the comedy sector and they he basically went in addition and he nailed what Moya and Lovett were looking for okay so that's how they got to do it David Foster and Christina Applegate were not the original picks for the children they originally aired a, the original pilot aired in December of 1986 with Al with two different groups of children and after the pilot um, had been filmed and the network executives took a look at it they said they figured these two kids are not going to work for the show so they went back into the talent pool and that's when they landed Faustino and Applegate for the roles of Bud and Kelly these two and believe me Faustino and Applegate they eventually uh, these two worked out pretty well in my opinion okay so Fox officially launched Married Children on April 5th, 1987, and the show wound up um, struggling for a little bit. It wound up struggling for a while, mainly because Fox was not available in most... There was only on in clear reception in a couple of markets. Like, unless you were in one of these few markets that actually had the Fox network up and running, when it kicked up, you were having a hard time trying to find Fox or Married Children without having to look for it on a hard to find UHF signal station right which is why Married Children they made up a whole bunch of they did a lot of um, poking fun in the later seasons assume Fox Network viewing positions so that's where that comes from alright it wouldn't be until the third season of married children where the show finally started to get recognized and it came across in such the wrong way possible like it came across in a way that nobody expected they wind up airing this episode called in January of 89 called her cups runneth over which features um, Al and Steve going to this uh, going to this um, adult store up in Oconomowoc Wisconsin to buy a bra for Peggy's birthday. The contents in that bra store pissed off this one viewer who was watching that night, Terry Ricolta, an upper class housewife from Blooming Hills, Michigan, also a relative to Utah Senator Mitt Romney, but that's a subject for another store, another episode. But basically, um, Ricolta, who had never heard of married children, allowed her children to watch the show. And when they saw the bra, and when she saw the bra store scene pop up, the kids were kicked out of the room, and she started taking notes. And she was absolutely disgusted with how, uh, with what she was seeing. She called the network the next day. They had no official complaint department, and the the, the writer to the show basically was. They took the call and said. Married Children is basically focusing on demographics that the other networks ha are ignoring. And if you do not like what you are seeing, just get your ass out of the couch and change the fucking channel. That answer did not was not satisfying to Ricolta at all. And she went on a huge tirade, which basically... She basically started writing to all these companies that sponsored Married Children and told them about how disgusted that she they were she was with them sponsoring such a show and 
threaten to boycott all of their products until they basically pull their advertising. In the short term, her tactics worked. Many uh, companies pulled their ads, while others vowed to screw, screen future episodes before placing any more ads. But it wasn't until she went on the talk show crusade, Donahue, Nightline, etc., etc., where she winded up um, making the show recognizable. Fan, okay, people were watching her, saying they they had never heard of married children until Terry Ricotta opened her fat mouth on these talk shows and said, "What the hell is she bitching about?" So they go on the they go over to Fox to tune in Married with Children to find out what all the fuss is about. And they basically, um, and uh, it basically boosted their ratings, and it re and the ratings remain decent through the show's end. All right, largely in part to Terry Ricolta. All right. So now we fast forward to season eleven. By this point, all of the show, all of those who had been with the show, like, but Ron Lovett and Michael Moya had both left the show by this point. Levitt left the show around season eight or nine to go work on a project for the WB called Unhappily Ever After, which ran from 95 to 99 and was unfortunately voted by TV Guide as one of the wor 50 worst shows in the history of television. Yes, it is in the same tier as Barney and Friends, Howard Stern, My Mother the Car, XFL, and Jerry Springer, just to name a few. Okay. But anyway, uh, going back to um, Mary Children, Michael Moyer had left by the end of season 10. All of, all of the network executives who had been with the network when the show first launched in 87 were all gone by then. We had brand new writers. We had brand new producers. Nobody knew what the future was going to hold for the show. All right. Publicly, the Fox network supported the show and they were going to do everything they could to keep it on as long as they could but behind the scenes they had enough all right the show was getting very expensive the ratings um they were hanging in there enough to keep it running for an 11th season but at the same time they felt like the show has run its course and they were trying to find a way to get it off the air. You just can't go in and cancel without getting backlash. So what they started doing, they started fucking around with married children left and right. Behind the scenes. They moved the the show wound up getting moved around random time slots throughout the entire eleventh season. So it started off on Saturday nights after they had canceled America's Most Wanted, but then when America's Most Wanted got put back on the air it wound up going back to Sundays until the end of 96, and which at that point it got moved onto Monday night lineup, which should remain on there for the remainder of the show's history. Okay? They also started fucking around with the show's production order. All right? The episodes were being produced in a specific order. The, this is, was meant to be the um, proper order for the 11th season, but Fox decided. Let's air this, okay? Let's do this differently. Like, I don't think this should be... Uh, you produce this first. I don't think you should be... This would qualify for a premiere. Let's put something else on that would be more attractive. Etc, 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 okay? And I know Married with Children fans, they're not really... They weren't really happy for the most part with how it ended, okay? There was a three-part episode in the middle part of Season 11 called Breaking Up is Easy to Do. They basically used this show, they used this three-parter to celebrate the show's 250th episode, although quite honestly, it would have been better used as the proper series finale, all right? And then um, they wind up uh, doing a two-part finale for season 11 called the first one was being Desperate Half Hour. The other part was How to Marry a Moron. When they wrote and filmed this two-parter, nobody at Married Children knew whether or not this was the end of the road or whether they were going to come back for a 12th season. Fox 
had no answers for them. All right? They did give married children the green light to do to finish the 11th season on a high, on a high note by doing a 1-hour show. This is what you can do, this is what you can't do, et cetera, et cetera. You're a lot we're going to let you do a, an hour long show. And then and the people who wrote the show, they really did not know whether or not this was going to be the end of the road. And if they had, they would have probably done a better job writing this episode. All right. Shortly after this episode, this two-parter was done filming, okay, they believe this was done around March, uh, mid, anywhere between mid-March to early April of 80, of 97. Um, shortly after they were done filming, uh, Fox Network publicly came out and announced that this show was canceled. And they decided not to tell anybody with the show. They wind up finding out on their own. Okay? Al Bun Ed O'Neill, the guy who plays Al Bundy, he wind up hearing it from this newlywed couple. He was actually out in, he was on vacation in his native Youngstown, Ohio. He ran to this newlywed couple at a bed and breakfast where they basically, um, they, they noticed Ed. They said, hey, it's a guy who plays Al Bundy. Hey, we love you on Married Children. We're sorry to hear about the show. Well, what are you talking about? It's all over the radio. It's, the show, show's been canceled. He basically took them in. He treated them into the bed and breakfast and bought them a drink. And he basically told them, I would have rather hear it, I heard it from you instead of them. Okay? Between the time, so basically, um, shortly after they finished filming, Martin Fox wind up marketing. Okay, and of course, this was between the time that the that they filmed the episode and the episode originally aired. Fox wind up right after they announced the show's cancellation, and they wind up canceling. They cited high production costs and low ratings as the reasons why they canceled the show. And I'll get to that in just a moment. But basically, um, they decided uh, this is going to be the end. Of, this is going to be the end of the show. And when while they were airing this hour-long finale, multiple times throughout the finale, they winded up airing this 15-second uh, se um, segments, saying saying, "Thanks for 11 seasons and a million laughs," with the Fox logo, and that is basically the one that is um how Fox thanked Mary Children for all of their years of loyalty to the network. Okay? So this so my um stance on this is if this is Fox's way of thanking a show that had a huge role in the network's um, early years, then thank you, Fox, for fucking over your most valuable asset. All right? Of course, these people had absolutely no respect towards married children at the end. But, of course, you can't just cancel married children out of the clear blue sky, so they have to find a way to do it. Say, it reminds me of the early years of Family Guy, okay? That show's been canceled a couple of times, all right, during its early years. And basically, um, the show first premiered in January of 1999. Its first season wind up airing, like, first episode, the pilot episode wind up airing immediately after Super Bowl 33, which was being televised by Fox that year. And that was the... It was the Denver Broncos and the Atlanta Falcons that were playing. It was John Elway's final game as an NFL player. Family Guy first launched, it first premiered, and they wound up airing the first remainder of the first season throughout 
the late spring into the early summer. And basically, uh, the show um, had some. The show started off with some good ratings, all right. But unfortunately, they wind up um, okay at first, and then they wind up coming across a bunch of other factors, okay. Um, which basically included, um, they wind up receiving stiff competition. They eventually received this very huge stiff competition against this quiz show that ABC brought in from the United Kingdom called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which at the time was the highest rate. It was the highest rated show on television. And if you were to put anything up against it, it would be an automatic killer. Okay. You had huge competition with that. Plus, you, Fox also started receiving huge number of complaints from these parent activists regarding the show, regarding Family Guy. Now, of course, animated shows back in the 90s, they had a there was a stereotype saying that if it's animated, kids are going to watch animated because they're animated is assumed to be for kids because that's all there was like for during the 70s and 80s the only animated programming that you find or m most of the animated programming that you would find on television was was cartoons for little kids simpsons broke the mold and said hey animated programming is not just for kids and they basically like we came up with a whole strain of animated programming throughout the 90s that were intended for um, an older audience. Simpsons, Beavis and Butthead, Family Guy, King of the Hill, just to name a few. All right, None of these shows are meant for kids. These parent activists that came across, they did not like Family Guy's um, tactics. They, they didn't like um, a talking dog who drank alcohol. They did not like a talking baby who tried to kill his mother. All right. They also didn't like the amount of violence and inappropriate language that was on the show. And Fox was stuck with all these episodes. So they wound up airing them in random time slots. And that gave them the legitimate excuse to cancel the show. Like, they had no permanent time slot. They were just trying to find um, random time slots for this show. All right. And which was basically enough to distract the audience away enough to say, hey, we can't find the show. Let's stop watching. Good. We, we're going to cancel it. And it wasn't until a few years later, around 2004, se show creators Seth MacFarlane and Alex Borstein, who played Lois Griffin, they basically uh, they uh, petitioned the Fox Network to put the show back on the air because the show wind up finding a they, to, to petition putting Family Guy back on the air because they had a, they found themselves a new audience through DVD sales and, re, and countless reruns in Adult Swim and TBS, and that's how Family Guy got back on the air. And like, what does Family Guy have to do with Married Children? Like, the way Married Children is being treated towards the end of its run, and the way the Family Guy got started, they got they were treated in the same way. Okay. Fox, like I'm gonna tell you, one thing I will say is this: uh, anybody who um, watches Fox, all right, for whatever reason, like whatever programming you watch, whether it's The Simpsons, um, uh, it, Fox has created a whole wide of huge fa famous programming. So whether it's Married Children or Cops or America's Most Wanted, The Simpsons. Um, Melrose Place, Beverly Hills 90210, Party of Five, The X Files, um, Sliders, NFL on Fox, uh, American Idol, Malcolm in the Middle, Master Chef, Hell's Kitchen, Glee, etc., etc. You've watched any of these shows? You owe a huge debt to the married children, because married children is the one that helped get the network up and running. And without married children's eventual success, who knows what the network would have become? Would it have been, would it have been defunct, like the Dupont Network turned out to be, 
or would it it would it still be struggling like it did in early years? Okay. Okay, so like it would not be the success it is today without married children. And the way and the fact that Fox treated the show like shit towards the end without a proper series finale, that is so low. All right, and it's absolutely disgusting and ab and at the very least unacceptable. Okay? That's what I have to say about that. All right? Especially since this was on before The Simpsons came on. All right? So basically, um, they should have... Okay. Alex Edwards, who was the creator of the Married Children podcast, all right? I will never forget his exact wording when he winded up reviewing Top of the Heap from Season 5 which turned out to be Married Children's 100th episode. Oh, speaking of which, Married Children was the first show in the network to hit 100 episodes, the first ep first show to go into five-day-a-week syndication, and it's also, to this date, the longest-running live-action sitcom to have ever appeared on Fox at 11 seasons and 259 episodes. Okay? But anyway, going back to what I was saying before, Alex Edwards on the Married Children podcast, he worded it perfectly when he was reviewing Top of the Heap. Okay? Married with Children got screwed twice in major milestones. They got cheated out of a proper 100th episode. And they also got cheated out of a official series finale. Okay? Kind of what is going on here. Fox forced Married Children to waste its very valuable 100th episode on a spin-off that went nowhere. And they never gave the show a proper send-off. Alright? You have to understand, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, Nobody knew that this was going to be, be the show's end. And if they had, they would have treated this with a lot more respect. All right? Don't let it fool you when Fox marketed this as a series, as the series finale. Because when they filmed this, nobody knew it was going to be the end. This was a see ya, maybe. Will I see you next season? I don't know. Okay. This show, for the for, for what for what Married Children did for Fox, in, in terms of getting the show up and running, it should have been sent off on a much better way. All right. My uh, way of sending this off would have been that three part breaking up is easy to do. It would have been perfect, too, because it would be a cliffhanger. Would Al and Peggy separate for good? Or would they just wind up getting back together at the end? Okay? By, film, by airing this early on, it loses a lot of momentum. Because you know, of course, they're going to get back together. you got a few more episodes you have to do. Okay? This should have been the proper... This should have been a series finale. Or at least it would have been... A proper series finale, in my opinion. And I'm not sure how many of you guys agree with that, but I'm sure there's people out there that do. And there's other people out there that would basically, um, they have their own version of how the show should have ended. All right? So I'm going to ask all of you guys, what do you think would have been, if you had the opportunity to write the Married Children series finale, like the one that was intended to be an official series finale for Married Children, what would it be? How would you officially wrap up the show? Okay? Leave your answers in the comments below. Okay? My editorial here 
is the opinion of one person and one person only. And of course we know that there's a wide variety of other opinions out there. So, so basically let your voice be heard. What do you think would have been your way of ending the show? Okay. Thank you for taking my time. I mean, thank you for taking uh, your time to hear me out, Mr. Wildcat. And until saying until next time, be good, be careful, and behave.